Thank you. So I can start off by saying, yes, I built all this stuff. Uh, my son helped me. So, um, so you don't have to think about that uh, during the whole presentation. <laughs> so I will start up with this uh, quote that I really, really like. Uh, I think it sums up much about Lean. Uh, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellent then is not an act, but a habit. So I will start out with this. Uh, I think improvements are experiments. Uh, and when I do improvement work in my environment, uh, in the software uh, development environment, stating it as actual experiments really helps. But if we have this situation, we are in the lab, we have two vials of two different colors, and we pour them together. And what happens? Hmm, I didn't expect that. That is really the sound of learning. And what we're trying to do with much of this is to learn. And we typically start out with some kind of hypothesis. And then we move in to make a prediction of what we think will happen. And I think if you're not used to this, you typically skip this step. And this is one of the most important steps. To actually make a prediction what you think will happen when we implement uh, the hypothesis that we have. And then we run the experiment. And yes, that part is bigger than the other ones. We should do very much. We need to think. We need to, to uh, do the prediction. But the actual doing is very important. And then we observe. And the delta between the prediction and the observation is our learning. And based on what we have learned, we need to adjust our hypothesis and loop it over all over again. And I think you should also add this into the mix. We should expect at least 50% of the experiments that we run not to give the result that we expected. Because this is when we really learn. And if we just do experiment and they always give the result that we were expecting, Aren't we just really late of implementing that? And also, I didn't use fail here, and that's uh, for a reason, because if you make a prediction and the result is actually better than you were expecting, you also have a reason to reflect and uh, try to understand why. So it's really the delta that we are interested in, not just if we fail or if you succeed. So let's do an experiment. Uh, like, try cross your arms. Feels natural? Do it the other way around. A little bit awkward. Why? Hmm. Same arms, hopefully. <laughs> Same muscles. It's a habit. We do it one way. We really have programmed our brain to do it that way. But if we would do it the opposite way every day, it will also become our habit, a pattern that we have uh, kind of wired into our brains. So is it moving forward? Yes. So what I think is that we really need to rewire our brains to get into this continuous improvement mindset. Because we're not used to it, especially if you grow up in Sweden. You're not used to that in our culture. And I think uh, Toyota Kara is a way to do that. So before I step into the rest of it, uh, who am I? I'm a Lean Agile coach from Sweden. I've been working with Agile, Scrum, and XP for some time. Uh, for the last few years, I've really been bitten by the Lean bug. Uh, and I think it expands the horizon of how to explain things and how to implement it outside our narrow style of IT. I typically use uh, Lean and Kanban uh, and the Kanban method as an approach to do these evolutionary changes. Uh, and I do some training and all that stuff. And yes, I actually had the, uh, the Star Wars figure here. <laughs> so let's step in, yes. This is one of my big interests, road cycling. 
And here in France, it's always nice. We actually have two races from here in France. That are my two favorites. Uh, Paris-Roubaix and also Tour de France. I'm also very passionate about barbecue. <laughs> and we have this uh, Swedish uh, comedy series called uh, Solsidan. It's a kind of a posh area in, in Stockholm. And this guy, he buys a big, uh, big grill and he grills all the time. And I haven't actually seen the episode myself, but as I understand it, that one is, that one is mine, and it's one model bigger than his, so I'm a little bit <laughs> proud of that. So, what is a kara? I've heard the word many times this day. Do we have anyone that wants to make a definition? What do you think is a kara? Practice, set of predefined movements, something that you repeat over and over again. Practice form. Practice form, yeah. So I've never practiced martial arts myself, but in martial arts, it might. This is a kata, I understand. Uh, and you practice this over and over again, so it becomes second nature, a muscle memory. And when it becomes that, you can start focusing on improving the small, small nuances of doing the kata. And this is really about what I think the Toyota kata is also about. And do we remember the movie? The Karate Kid, Wax On, Wax Off. And he was practicing uh, blocking punches, if I understand it correctly. And it became second nature. And that is what we want to do. So. We want to create the muscle memory of continuous improvement in the organization. And habits is quite hard to form. Uh, just like we're crossing our arms. If we don't think about it, we will do the same. But we think about it, uh, we can create a new habit. So it's like climbing a stair to create new habits. There's some saying that it takes 30 days to create a habit if you do it every day. I think it takes even longer. So you need to keep it up over and over and over again. But when you have created a habit, you're no longer on a staircase. You're on the ex escalator. You don't have to think about it. You just move along. Maybe we move on to the next slide. Hopefully. Yeah. So Toyota Kara, that is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's from the book by the same name by Mike Rother. And as I understand it, this is created based on his observation at Toyota and other lean companies. And then he has taken this home, codified it himself. So if you will go to Toyota and ask them, are you doing the Toyota Kara? They will give you a blank stare and say, huh? This is what he has codified, but it takes the essence out of uh, how it's actually done. So. What's the basic of it? You have some kind of vision. You have your current condition. And then you try to see how you can get from your current condition towards your vision. And the vision is typically something that is a lifetime or two away. So that might not be too inspiring uh, and giving you high motivation uh, or a sense of urgency. So we create a challenge. And as I understand it, a challenge for companies like Toyota is typically something that is five, ten years out. A big challenge that you should strive for for some time. And even that might not be something that is really motivating you to, to do something, some change in your daily work. So we set these target conditions that we will move in smaller steps. And these might be something like a month or three months out from where you are today. That gives you more motivation and something to strive for in your daily work. And this is the basic kind of setup. So if we take this to another concept, let's take vision. We should boldly go where no one has gone before. Mm -hmm. And current condition is, I believe it's in the early 1960s in the US. There was a challenge put forth by the president, we should go to the moon and back. They really didn't know how to achieve it. It was something like eight, ten years out. 
And then they set target conditions. We need a rocket that can go out of orbit. It should be able to carry humans and they should survive. And we should go to the moon and back. Uh, eventually we should land on the moon and get back. And these are the target conditions towards that challenge. So that's one way of translating it into another context. Let's dive into the actual content then. Uh, improvement kata is one part, and then we have the coaching kata. These two is needed to be used together. And the improvement kata is to do the actual improvement work, and the coaching kata is done by the leaders and the teachers and the coaches to facilitate the improvement kata. The improvement kata has four steps or phases. The first one is understanding the direction. Then we have grasping the current condition, establishing the next target condition, and then PDCA towards the target condition. For some reason it's not advancing, so let's see. So we have understanding the direction. Uh, if we talk about motivation, Stephen Pink talks about uh, autonomy, mastery, and purpose that drives motivation, especially in knowledge work. And I think uh, the sense of purpose or a, a common vision of where we want to go is very, very important to give motivation and help us strive to so towards something. So. Understanding the direction is a true, truly important part of this, and you need to spend time on this and to define what is the direction you want to go. And in these terms, it's uh, very process focused. When we talk about Toyota Kara, it's not the business vision, uh, it's not the company vision, and it shouldn't be focused on outcome. We should focus on the daily behaviors, how we do things in the daily uh, work so we can understand when we don't perform up to the standard we have def defined. And these are really early indicators or leading indicators of how the system performs. Uh, if we wait for things like lead time and things like that that are lagging indicators, it will take a very, very long time to understand how the system performs. So we need to focus on how the, the process performs. So the vision should be focused around that. And according to Mike, the vision uh, that Toyota has for its uh, production operations, it says zero defects, 100% value added, one piece flow in sequence on demand, and security for people. And when we say security for people, in these terms it's about uh, security and no injuries. Uh, and when we talk about this in an in a agile context, it, we typically don't injure ourselves that much. Uh, in IT. Uh, it can probably happen, but uh, uh, then we can maybe talk about job security and security to explore new things and things like that. So anyone here owns a Toyota? Hmm? Zero defects? They are probably top of the class, but there's still defects in the, in the fi final product. Do you think uh, their production operations has 100% value added? Everything, every step is 100% value added? No, uh, not even close. One piece flow in sequence on demand. Mm, I would say there's probably not that. One piece flow. Are they mining the ore for the car? One car at a time? Probably not. But they're striving towards it, and that's the purpose. This is kind of giving you the vision. Do we do it in sequence? Mm, to some degree, uh, on demand. As I understand it, there's quite a few of Toyota cars in the parking lot in San Diego or whatever it is, uh, waiting to be delivered to the US market. So they're still not just on demand uh, building of cars, even for Toyota. Security for people, I understand it's very, very low injury rate in the factories and that they are very proud of that. So how could this look in 
in a, in a software or an IT environment. If we can let to move the slides to move forward, there we are. So maybe we should think about zero defects in production when we do product development work. We might not be able to, and it might not be cost efficient to have totally defect free inside the process. But when we reach the customer, I hope it should be at least technical without any defects. 100% value added. Well, even this is probably quite hard, but it's something to strive towards. Then I say highest value first on demand. Uh, when we do software development and things, uh, product development is typically more driven by the value of the things that we do than that we should deliver it in sequence. So and that's why I say highest value first and based on the demand by the customer. And security for people. We don't want people to injure yourself, but also job security. If we then go to grasp the current condition, it's very important for all the managers and the leaders in the organization to step out of the corner office and try to understand how things really work. And in IT, it's a little bit different than in production, or if you produce uh, in a manufacturing plant, you can't really see the work. It's hidden. It's hidden inside the computers. So we really need to go and see where the work is done and talk to the people who do the actual work. And we can't often just stand in the room and observe in the kind of classical owner circle. We need to visualize the work somehow. And then we come to things like uh, visual management board or, or uh, task boards like this. And it's really important that we try to make everyone understand how the work is done and how it's flown through the system. It's also very important to collect facts and data and no gut feeling. But how do we do when we don't have uh, hard facts or data? We only have gut, gut feeling. Well, then collect that gut feeling as data. You can actually note it down and have it as data. So I have this team that I work with and they have, uh, are we satisfied and motivated by our work? How do you measure that more than on a gut feeling or based on how they feel? But they note it down on a daily basis and we actually get uh, some kind of data that we can uh, look at and act upon. It should be, uh, you should describe some kind of process description, value stream map or your visualization and things like that, how the uh, work is done. You should try to collect process metrics and how is the process operating? Are we uh, accor running according to standardization or not? Uh, and then we should collect the outcome metrics. What is the actual outcome of running the process? And this would be kind of the measuring if uh, we get the results in the end that we are looking for. But the focus should be uh, on the process metrics, how we operate on a daily basis. Then we come to the next, and that is to establish the target condition. And this is a dialogue between the learners and the coach to try to find out uh, what would be the next appropriate target condition. And the target condition should really be just beyond the learner's knowledge horizon. So they should be just outside of what they think they can achieve. So it will be a challenge. It should feel like, uh, it should feel like putting a square peg in a round hole. If we go back to space, we think about the movie Apollo 13, we have uh, an issue with the high carbon, carbon minor, whatever it's called, uh, a high level of poisonous gas in, the, uh, uh, in one of the pods. And they have, in that part, you have a hole for round filters. But in the other side, they have holes for square filters, and those filters are actually working. So how can they put them in there? And then bringing, they bring all the engineers in, into a room and say, this is the things that you can, can use and you need to fix the problem. And they pour it out on the table 
and they say, fix the problem. And we as humans are actually very, very good uh, when we get this kind of challenge to solve them. So this is how it should feel when you set this target condition. So setting a target condition, it should be an hypothesis on the journey towards uh, your vision, challenging vision. But it should also be based on your st business strategy and your model for how you do process improvement. And the business uh, model might be that you think in terms of, of lean thinking, waste reduction, or whatever it is. Uh, and it should also fit into how you do process improvements. So it shouldn't probably go in the opposite direction if you don't want to kind of validate that the thing you did before was actually had a cause and, a relationship, uh, cause and effect relationship, so you need to try the opposite. But the main direction should be towards your vision and challenge. And it should follow the Goldilocks rule. In Sweden, we have this term called, uh, or word, uh, called lagom. And I understand there's no translation in most languages. Uh, so the, easy, uh, the closest we can get is, it should not be too hard, not too easy. It should be just right. And how hard do you think it is to set a target condition that is just right? It's very hard. It's a, something that you need to acquire as a skill over time. So we have our current condition. We have a challenge. So how do we set the target conditions? Do we set them on a straight line from our current condition towards the challenge? No. It's more like this. We have the unknown territory. And what we want to do is to take one step into the unknown and see what happens and adjust based on what really happens. And we only address the problems that are in the way from our current condition towards the target condition. We are not concerned about other problems right now, because if we take a step in, some of the problems that we have currently might actually disappear. So we only try to go in one direction at a time. And if that direction is wrong, then we can change the direction uh, when we are at the target condition and have validated our or invalidated our hypothesis. So in the IT and software environment, how could uh, a potential target condition look like? And this is a little bit hard. Uh, so some of them might not be that good, but uh, one of the things I typically do in the beginning is to say, we need to make all work visible. Because typically in the environment, in the IT environment, is that most of the work is actually hidden. It's just like that pl plan in the Hitch's High to the Galaxy that said that we're going to tear down the planet Earth. But if no one can see it, it's hidden in that uh, IT system, how do we really know what's going to happen? Lead time, set it to 60, 60 days instead of 80. And here we are not using relative terms, we're using absolute numbers. And that is... Uh, a specific reason because then you really know if you reached the target condition or not you don't have to reflect on where you started and this is the same if we want to reduce work in process uh, we make hard numbers so it's, it's easy to see if we have reached it or not and maybe get into the habit of putting things into production uh, every second week it might be something that would be an appropriate challenge and if you do things like uh, specification by example, that you actually define the outcome uh, or the value you want to create for a user story before you actually get started on coding, it should be done on, in this term, it's a growing number and therefore uh, I set it to 80%. But using hard numbers is really preferred. Then we get to step number four. And we get to the PCA cycles. And we talked about this quite a bit here in this morning. So I guess most of you are familiar with it. And what we really want to do is to take very, very small steps from uh, 
our current condition towards the target condition. And just like with the target condition, uh, setting that towards the challenge, it is not really a straight arrow. It's we stepping into the theory, uh, territory of the unknown again, and we run some experiments. Some of them uh, will give one result that we didn't expect at all and never potentially didn't move us in the right direction. So we need to restart uh, and take a new path uh, through this territory of the unknown. So taking small, small steps and moving deliberately, hopefully on a daily basis, is kind of the key to this. And to be able to do this, you need the coach uh, that will help you, that supports you. And the coach's role here is to uh, have the leader coach the learners. And the coach should kind of help people along. They should also give them a push in the right direction. So it's both kind of helping people, but also giving them a challenge to move in a certain direction. And if they're moving outside of, of the defined bounds of what we think are the kind of the vision or the business strategy, they should also be the ones pointing out that we are moving a little bit in out of the direction we are thinking. And to do this, we have these five uh, questions that we use, and we go through them every time we go through this PDCA cycle. And we've seen a very similar uh, set of questions that you used in the previous presentation here. And we always start out with what is the target condition? And by anchoring our thinking on where we want to move, and by repeating it, uh, on a daily basis, we can also start asking question, is this target condition clear enough? As we learn more, sometimes we need to clarify uh, the target condition so we can understand where we're moving. When we repeat the diet, uh, we turn to what is the actual condition now? So if we can do this on a daily basis, uh, we need to have uh, data and facts on a daily basis of how we operate our processes so we can understand how things are today. And depending on if you have done an experiment before or not, we turn over the card to the other side. So if you have done a step before, we repeat, what was your last step? And you repeat what was the last step and you kind of uh, ask people to speak out loud uh, what they were doing the last time. And then they have the opportunity to reflect, did we actually do this or not? And then we come to question number two, which I think is the most important one. Uh, what did you expect? So we should be able to, in advance, formulate what do we expect when we run the experiments. And if we haven't defined this, we can't really uh, get to the big results of going through the kata, which is the learning. And then we get to question number three here, and it says, what actually happened? And then the team, the learners, should be able to describe what happened when we implemented uh, this experiment, this hypothesis. And based on those observations, what did we really learn? What was the delta between what we expected and what really happened? And when we've gone through that, we flip the card over again. And we look at, so now, at the position where we are now, what are the obstacles uh, do you think are preventing us from reaching the target condition? And when we can go through the potential obstacles, but we only want to address one of them at a time. And when we decide which one are we addressing now? Then we get to the, the important step again, what is your next step? the next PDCA cycle, and what do you expect will happen? And then, of course, we want to define when in time should we meet and go through and see what really happened. And are we able to actually go and observe how the process operates, which is sometimes very hard when we do this in IT. Uh, we define where we should go and see and when to see what we have learned from taking these steps. And the teams I work with, at least some of them, 
they really think Toyota Kata rocks and helps them to have a shared sense of purpose and a direction of where to go and do these uh, continuous improvement on a daily basis. And with that, here you have some uh, links to where you can find out more information about uh, Toyota Kata. And hopefully in the future, I will share some more insights uh, and reflections of how I've done this on my blog.